Hello everyone, Mr. Rob Ronan here again, and today I'm here for a breakdown on Ochako Uraraka. Uravati. Ochako, I would definitely say, is a brawler character. She's good at being close range, doing pressure, using red attacks, and doing armor moves. She's definitely close ranged, brawler, so thank god she did that gunhead training, whatever that was. <laughs> Anyways, getting into her buttons. A regular attack string is a four hitting attack string that requires three buttons. So you press it three times and she'll do all four attacks. It's special cancelable from any attack, and so it's easy to connect combos off As you saw before, her air string is a five hitting attack string that requires four buttons. The last hit can wall splat, um, but only if you're high and near a wall, like so. So both are pretty decent attack strings. They hit quite a few times, so they're easy to um, hit confirm. They can be dash cancelled after basically any point, and so they're very good at extending her combos. Her armor attack on the ground is a two hitting float attack. It keeps the enemy suspended in the air for a while. And see, I have um, Bakugo on recovery, so he is actually being held in the air for all that time before he can recover. So that's one of your main combo extenders, and it can be comboed into, which is really great. Um, her air armor, armor attack is this air, armored air grab thing. Um, it's just a splat, it does good damage, it leaves them on the ground, you're not going to get anything off of it. Uh, but it will usually break the ground if you're on a map that has a breakable floor. Her red attack is pretty great, it's quite quick decently ranged, it can hit from about here, maybe even a bit further, no, that was about the limit, very fast, very good range, and it's one of the great armor attacks where you can just go straight into your regular attack string for a combo, so it doesn't restrict you or just do a regular splat, you can do whatever great combos you can do regularly. Okay, now for her quirk one, her quirk one is the meteor volley from episode one, where she grabs a pillar and just whacks you a, a bunch of times. It does up to six hits if you press the button a lot. If you just tap Quirk 1 once, it'll just do two hits and send the enemy flying, but if you press it multiple times, like I am here, you can do up to six hits. Um, obviously, it's a great wall splat attack, so see if I just do the two hits here and send him flying into the wall. It wall splats nearly every time. It can wall splat them from across the map. It's amazing. And it's a very damaging combo ender. It's one of her highest damaging special moves, or quirk moves on its own. It does, I think, 4,700. Oops, if they all hit. Yeah, 4,700 and leads to wall splat. It's pretty great. Great combo ender. Her tilt quirk one is an interesting move. She lifts up a rock and kicks it as a projectile at the opponent. It doesn't have the greatest tracking, so if they move at all, it's not going to go after them. But it's decently fast and does decent damage, 2000, and has them in the air for if you want to get a follow-up combo. See there, it doesn't track very well. As soon as you press the button and she starts lifting it up, if the opponent moves, she'll throw it in the direction that they were. Uh, the first hit can hit as well. It can lead to some interesting setups. Say if you get a wall splat, you can do two hits into this. The first hit will combo, and then the second hit won't. And then after the second hit, you can get attacks after it, like so. Uh, very interesting move. I think its main purpose is to be an anti-zoning like projectile, just so she's something she can throw out easily. Uh, if she gets interrupted. If the opponent hits her after like the first thing where she lifts up the rock, she will just have it flipping around like this with her quirk too. Um, yeah, just an interesting combo extending move. If she has rocks up already, like ones floating around her and she does it, she'll just kick it straight at them so it's a bit faster. So you know, decent anti-zoning projectile move can lead to some interesting resets combo things. Okay, now her quirk 2 is just the, the rock lift. She picks up a rock and has them floating around her, she sets them up and will have them floating around her for quite a while before they start disappearing. 
they, they're pretty good at staying around. If you get hit, they'll still be there, unless it's a plus ultra 2 attack, but they'll generally just be staying around until you use them in a combo or something. Or if you use them as these projectiles. Um, they're pretty fast. As you can see, you can only have 3 at a time. If you try to do more, one will just break. You can have a maximum of 3. Okay, now these have multiple uses. They either add damage to your combo, see here, if I do it, sometimes one will go into the combo and make it an extra hit, see there was 5 hits when it's usually only 4. Let me throw these away. Usually that string is only 4 hits, but when you do it, here I'll do this whole thing. So that's 9 hits, but if I have my 3 rocks up, They'll hit the opponent intermittently and does 11 hits and more damage because they will hit him during the combo. So they do more. They uh, add damage to your combos when you're attacking people, which is what Uraraka likes to do. But also, if you're far away, you can do her tilt quirk one faster for the projectile, or you can do her standing quirk one, the meteor volley pillar whack thing, and it whacks them out as projectiles. It's really fast projectiles as well. That combo, if you have all three of them off. So if you read your opponents doing uns something unsafe from far away, or you just want to, you know, scare them, make them realize you have something to do when you're far away, they can't just take advantage of you or run away, because you can hit either of them, and they do pretty good damage, especially if you have all three. Yeah. Wow, 4,800 damage for projectiles. That's pretty good. Okay, now for her Tilt Quirk 2. It is this red move that keeps the opponent floating for a long time. A long, long time. Baku goes on recovery, like I said before, and he was floating for that whole time. And you know what that means? You can get a combo off it, obviously, but you can also get all three rocks and then go in and attack. So you can have crazy, cool, extended combos this way. Okay, since we started talking about combos, I think we may as well show some of them. Okay, sorry about that guys. Now getting into Uraraka's combo, she has very high meterless damage, so if you do two strikes into her armor move, you can just jump into her attacks upwards, you do three um, into her rock lift, into her baseball swing thing. So, <laughs> two hits into armor move, jump, one, two, three, four, quirk two, and then into ho home run media rush. 7,800 damage is very good, especially since I didn't do any dash cancels in that combo. Uh, if you want to add a dash cancel near the end, you can dash cancel after before the last hit of media rush before it does the mete uh, meteor blow, and you can get a bit more damage. So if I go two hits into her armor move, one, two, three, four, work two into meteor rush. One, two, three. Oops. Mess that up. One, two. Into armor move. One, two, three, four, quirk two. Meteor rush. Two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, quirk two. And then meteor rush. And you'll only be able to get three hits, but it does a lot more damage. 9,800. Well, maybe not a lot more, but it does, you know, a bit more if you want to end the opponent off. And if it ends them, then it's definitely worth it. Um, so those are her bread and butter combos, obviously they'll do a bit more if you add in this. The red attack at the beginning, it'll do about 2,000 more, obviously. And that's basically it for her regular combos. If you get a wall splat, I recommend just going in and then using not that red attack. So if your combo ends in a wall splat and then you get them, do this. <laughs> Let me show you on the ground. Do her red armor attack, her, her red unblockable attack, her tilt quirk two. Get all three rocks, two, three, and then go into not that. Make it even greater, I promise. So do her red attack, and you can get out three rocks. One, two, three, four, that, and one. 9,157 damage. N meterless, just for getting a red attack off. Now, that is something you can do even just as a, a reset. Say if I've done a really long combo, and then I've gotten a wall splat, and I'm like, oh no, I don't want to have all this scaling. Just cancel it into this red attack. Often the opponent isn't ready for that. Get up a bunch of rocks, and then go into this. 
and then it's reset them, it'll do a lot more damage. That didn't do a lot of damage because I messed it up and didn't connect the home run meteor rush. But you see the point, even just on the ground, just cancel this into that. The opponent isn't ready for a red attack just randomly in the middle of your combos, like ever. I, the, the hit rate of that is crazy. And yeah, you get lots of damage easily. See, you didn't even need that dash cancel in that I just did. Do the meterless and you get like 9,300. It's great. Completely meterless just for mixing them up on block. I'm not sure what happened there. I'll try that once more. See, it doesn't have the best range and it's a bit slow, but if you use it as a mix up, they're bound to get hit by it. And yeah, you get a lot of damage off of that. Um, that is essentially her regular combos, her regular BNB. If you're not using a plus ultra, you d so to just to recap, you do two hits into her armor attack, into to some crazy air combo that you feel like doing. Um, you can use as many dash cancels as you like, you can try and build as many rocks as you like by cancelling the fourth hit of this into the rock, into this, getting more damage. There's lots of ways you can extend her combos from the air, but essentially you do two hits into the armor move on the ground, and then you can just jump up. There's a great bread and butter. It was two dash cancels, but it did 10,800 basically. So, as you can see there, you can mix and match what you want to do in the air do the four hits, or do the meteor run, or build a rock. You can even go in the arm move, like in the air if you want. You, you can really do anything you'd like. She's very uh, combo free, and she doesn't have too much of a problem with meteor blows ruining her combos. Okay, now for where her combos get really interesting is when you use her plus ultra one, which is this move here, which does, you know, a 7,000 damage, which is decent, but it can also be used in the air, which makes it better, of course, makes it lead better than other plus ultra attacks, so you can combo it after your whole air combo, you can go into her plus ultra one but it can also be easily comboed out of if you use a support. Now usually I don't talk about supports in these videos because support extension combos are usually pretty easily and personalized. You just have to time it with your different supports. Some of them are good at juggling, like Ida is. She doesn't miss like that. Some are good for extending combos. And they're pretty like simple. It's just down to the characters that you want to use. You can extend after anything, like if I did this, and then I could go into do some weird stuff with whatever support I want. But with Uraraka, I feel like using supports is very important to her playstyle. Because say if I do one, two, three, and I've done a long combo, or longer than this one, and I cancel into her plus ultra one, her supports can easily combo out of her. And then oh, and then she can. Okay, so an example of a crazy plus ultra combo you can do with Uraraka uh, is if you extend it with someone like Ida or Aizawa, someone that like holds them or bounces them for a while. I think Kami is also a good support that for extending combos. So I'll show if you do one, two, three, four into that. This is the most reliable way of hitting her plus ultra one. Sometimes it misses if you're near a wall, but this attack, doing the float into it is usually the best way to uh, confirm it. Um, I absolutely messed up there. Let me try that again. <laughs> To Ida. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. That was a very non optimal combo, but you can still see it did 15,000 damage. So, say if I even did my combo into that, it's gonna do even more damage, so. Let me make sure I have Ida. Okay, see, near the wall, sometimes the first hits don't hit and then it doesn't actually combo. So you want to make sure you're not getting too close to a wall, which can sometimes be annoying, but you'll just have to do the plus ultra early. So say if I do these two hits, you can see I realize I'm getting close to the wall. I'll just go into it now to make sure I actually get the full plus ultra. 
And then late on into it for a Hida. See, that was no no dash cancel or anything. I did 14,000, basically 15,000 damage. And if I wanted to do another dash cancel, then oh my god, I'm getting so much damage. See, I'll just do it now so I make sure that I actually hit the whole thing. Play on, pull out Ida. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. Fifteen thousand. Um, I know you can do a lot of other things. I just I mess up a lot when I'm doing plus ultra combos. You can do. Here, let me try it one more time, and I'll try and make it a bit more optimal. And I'll go into it before I get too close to the wall. Pull out Ida. Okay, sorry, but that was a reset. But this would be doing about 17,000, 18,000 damage, which is really ridiculous if you don't mess it up and make it a reset. Um, now, for the other very interesting way to extend her combos with the plus ultra is by using a support that no one really uses, and that is Tsuyu, or Froppy. She, because Froppy, when she's doing the plus ultra one, if you pull out Froppy, the rock is still attacking, and she can... So she basically cancels you from standing there, and lets you attack while your rocks are going on. So if I get Sue to take me out of there, and I can connect things after that, which is really awesome. So, an example of how a combo with Suyu would work, I would just do basically the same thing, except use Tsuyu, obviously. You want to make sure you use Tsuyu at the beginning, because you need the ma a lot of time to- Oh, that reset, that was rude. So I pull out Tsuyu to pull me out of it, and I can do one, two, three, into the this. And that wasn't optimal, but you can see it does the same amount of damage if you use a, a support that bounces like Ida or someone. And as you can see with Tsuyu, because her support isn't usually used for combo extensions, her um, reach charge time is very, very low if you use it to extend the combo. So as you saw, before I was even finished the combo, the support was back, so I can do another one. Let me show you. So the plus ultra one. You see, you pull me away. Oh no, 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 I didn't mean to do an armor move. Okay, even that did a lot of damage, I guess I can show you that. Okay, get Sue to pull me away. So probably Meteor Blow. Yes, 19,000 damage just doing two plus ultra attacks. It's more that you, than you get if you do um if you just do your uh, your plus ultra two with most characters. So two hits, and this isn't optimal because this map is small and kind of congesting when I can go into um when I can go into the plus ultra one because I don't want to be near a wall when I use it. But yeah, she can get great damage, and Suyu's basically back instantly after you, you finish the combo, so it's not like you're down a support. That was a bit of a reset in the air, but you can't see the full damage because every time you reset the opponent, they refill their health in training mode. But her plus ultra things do a lot of damage. I would suggest using Tsuyu as your first combo extension, because if you use someone like Ida or Aizawa, they take a lot longer to come back, see their reach charge time is a lot slower than someone like Tsuyu. So if they attack you after you've done your combo, I think Tsuyu might even beat him even though I used him first. Um, 
But essentially you want to use two so that if your opponent starts to attack you, even after you've done the combo, you can use her to break you out of the combo and you're not down a, a breakaway too, for too long, even though you've done an amazingly high damaging combo using her. She'll basically be back afterwards. See that? I didn't manage to cancel it, but she's, she's nearly back, and if I had done the home run meteor rush and dash cancelled into another home run meteor rush, you can see here, the time that it takes me to do those two things, she's come back. So that's a very good way of extending combos, it's practically free, just using the, um, only costing a plus ultra 1. Uh, her plus ultra 2 isn't anything too special, comboing into it, you basically, the most damaging is to just do her base combo attack. So I, I, the most damage she'll usually get is if you have all of her rocks up and do an armor move into her 1, 2, 3. And obviously, like all plus ultra twos, its main use is just to, as a very sure way of ending out the game. If you wanna, you don't wanna do a flashy combo in case they break away. You don't wanna have a chance of dropping your combo. You just wanna completely end them and end the game. And also, just look really awesome. Obviously. Okay, and that's basically the breakdown for Ochako Uraraka. Um, make sure you're using her brawling moves, doing her awesome combos, because they're very fun. And make sure you have your assists, especially Tsuyu, that are great for extending her combos. Uh, to get lots of easy damage just for 1 plus Ultra 1, not even a dash cancel in that one. She does lots of damage, she is great guard pressure by with her home run meteor rush, I do one, two, into this, and then you can dash cancel out of it, and then get pretty easy guard pressure with that. Stop that. Um, you want to make sh this uh, actually does a lot. Her armor attack actually does a lot of guard pressure. If so if you dash cancel after that, then. They've basically lost their guard. It takes almost half just that one armor move. They have no hope of not getting hit by that if you use your armor move during that. See, that almost broke his guard with just this. And if that manages to hit them, then well, you've gotten your full easy meterless combos. See that? And then you. Easy guard pressure. Obviously there's some gaps in it that they can dash out of, but you know, mix them up, use the armor move if they, you think they're gonna dash out of the way, or use this. This is really good for people that like to dash out of the way and then, you know, like Kami's that like to go ooh and then attack you, or ooh and then attack you and do all the sidestepping and stuff. Just do your home run meteor rush, have this massive pillar flying around you, and they'll get hit by it. Um, Essentially, Uraraka is just a great combo character. See, even when he was blocking there, that armor move hits him. It's very hard to react to. If you're just getting comboed, you're like, oh no, he punished me. And then you actually hit him with this. And then you're hitting him with tons of... Oh, damage just from one <laughs> unblockable move that they didn't react to. And if they, you think they're going to sidestep from the unblockable move, you can go into this and then do basically the same thing, but dash cancel out of, out of it. Anyways, sorry this has been such a long one. Uraraka is just a really interesting combo character, and I find her very fun to play. So, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!